At this time, we're seeing a much needed resurrection of the goddess and the more spirally, cyclical aspects of our existence. Many say we're midwifing the rebirth of the goddess or welcoming her back. And to that I say, she never left. On today's show, episode 36, I'm getting into the small shift in the way we think and feel about the goddess that'll make all the difference as we work to transition back into and remember more integrated ways of being. I'll also discuss ways to incorporate these shifts tangibly into your life. Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Subtle Medicine, brought to you by InnerSpark.Life by Devin Ray Battaglia. This is the resource for the sensitive soul looking to reclaim their power and reconnect to their magic through remembering how to trust their bodies, align with nature and cosmic flow, leverage their subtle energies, and transmute trauma and pain into gifts and purpose. Get ready to dive into all things holistic healing, natural living, conscious relating, epic life changing, and spirituality, all steeped in earth-based wisdom. I'm the show's producer, Mike, and now here's your host, Devin. We're all questing for something these days, right? Like better lives, better bodies, better sex, better relationships, better diets. Ultimately, it boils down to really seeking a connection with God or goddess. And all the while, we are seeking outside of ourselves. When it comes to the goddess specifically, and those more lunar, feminine, spirally, passive, transient aspects of our existence, the past several thousand years have brought illusions steeped in shame and damnation that say they are wrong, gone, and banished. And at this time right now on the planet, there is a rising curiosity about her, a collective desire for harmony and more wholesome, integrated ways of living. The goddess is in conversations, in courses, in books, in popular culture. She's become this thing to seek and to find again. Where has she gone? Why can't I find her? You may ask yourself, and I've heard people ask of me when when we're diving into these things. And, you know, I used to feel this way too, actually. I thought that as a concept, the goddess, the feminine, this this spirally aspect of existence, I thought it sounded lovely. And yet I didn't have the first clue where to look or how to make that part of my life, my experience. I felt like anything goddess-like or spirally was unsafe and definitely not for me because I was too ungoddess like if you will. And yet I still quested because there was something missing. I thought that my work, actually, when I first began, was about resurrecting the sacred spiral energies, which you've all probably heard me say before. I thought we all owed it to humanity and Mother Earth to midwife the rebirth of the Divine Feminine. And while all of this is true to a certain degree, it's only part of the story and part of the actual need. The thing is, the goddess has never left. She's been hidden in plain sight and we've all been programmed and scared into submission for thousands of years to act as though we don't see her. So just think about that for a moment. I'm going to say it again. She's never left, despite great attempts, despite what seems to be the contrary. She has never left. She has been hidden in plain sight here with us all along. And we've all been programmed and scared into submission to act as though we don't see her. There is a book I really love called The Clan of the Cave Bear, and it's about, you know, very early humans and living in little groups and and nomadic peoples. And back then, obviously, the greatest threat would be to be kicked out of the group because you can't survive out there on your own. It was certain death. And so when somebody would upset the leader or or commit something, you know, some horrible act, it was a very rare thing to do, but they could kick you out. And rather than kick you out, they would put this curse on you that would make it as though you just didn't exist anymore. You were not visible. And so it was almost like a fate worse than death because you just nobody saw you and everybody acted as though you just weren't there and they didn't see you. And it was this big illusion, this big trick because obviously the person is still there and yet they're now screwed right their their future with the clan is is no longer safe and nobody is going to dare say that well actually i can still see this person because they're gonna join right and get kicked out as well 
And so there's that threat of persecution. And that's literally what has happened in this case. She has never left. Those aspects of life, of our existence, of creation, have never stopped, have never gone away. She's not something to seek. She's not something to find. She's not something to repair or, you know, resurrect. And so do you want proof of that? Here's the proof. Existence continues, therefore she's here. The cyclical rhythms and spirals and pulsations continue. The birth, life, death cycle goes on. Seasons come and go. Flowers bloom and die. Your body changes. You're hearing my words right now. We're in this beautiful just stream and spiral of life. She's right here and has been all along. So that being said, clearly something is amiss, right? We're not living in a harmonious, wholesome way that incorporates both and, that incorporates all of us, that has us all living very integrated, wholesome lives. And so what do we actually need if it's not to resurrect the divine feminine, midwife the rebirth, welcome her back, find her because she's been here the whole time, then what do we actually need? And I believe that we must resurrect the awareness of the spiral aspects of our existence, not the spiral aspects themselves because they're here. They've just been hidden in plain sight all along. And actually continuing to seek her, search for her, quest for her, is still perpetuating the illusion that's been fed to us for far too long about divinity and holiness and all things sacred being outside of us. So the quest is pointless because you've arrived. There's nothing outside of you. There's nothing to find. It's all here. What we must do is resurrect the awareness of her and the devotion to and appreciation of her to remember that, oh, she's actually here. Oh, I am both and. I am both structure and flow. And we do this. All right, ready? Like, how do we do this? We do this through repairing our relationship with our inner wounded masculine, our inner kings, our inner sense of authority, our inner structure, our inner containment, and through devoted discipline. So all of those things that are the triangular aspects of existence that you've heard me talk about before. So I don't really like to use masculine and feminine because I find them quite loaded. I like to use spiral and triangle because it gets us thinking much deeper, much broader. And so repairing this relationship with our inner triangle, our inner sense of structure is the way to safely remember her. Okay. If I can jump in real quick with, uh, well, a comment and a question. So the comment is that I am totally on board and 100% tracking when you bring up the idea that divinity has never died, be it God, goddess, in whatever way you relate to it. Um, the goddess is not gone. She's never left. And she certainly is not some dead thing to be resurrected. I completely agree on that. And also, uh, what you're talking about is something that I think happens over and over again with spirituality and faith or religion, whatever you call that relationship between your present experience and the infinite and the divine. Um, like take Jesus in Judaism, for example, he was, uh, his message was that heaven is not in the sky. If that were the case, the birds would already be there. Um, it's in your heart. And Buddhism with uh, Siddhartha speaking to the Brahmins was you don't need to make another sacrifice, another um, purification, another discipline. The what you're seeking is already inside you. And it, it was it's the same message. And we keep as, as people, uh, as humans, we keep looking for something outside of ourselves. And we have these ideas that the infinite uh, and the immortal and the divine comes and goes, which is a really silly thing for me. Uh, because if you think about this infinite and this divine, and you think about like how long have humans been around on this current iteration of earth and this rock that we're on and if god goddess infinity divinity 
has been around forever, then it doesn't seem to me like a little cultural shift of our attitudes would change that. Like, just because some guys a few thousand years ago decided to set up some patriarchy on Earth, like, do you think that that would really be enough to, like, to kill a god, to put uh, a stop to the divine feminine just because some there was a cultural shift that ignored her? It goes back to what you were saying about Clan of the Cave Bear and the Death Curse. Just because we chose to ignore her uh, doesn't mean that she ceased to exist. Um, so I think that's a really awesome point, and it's one that can be seen anytime people go looking for salvation outside themselves eventually uh we keep having to come back and to be reminded that it's inside us so i think that's a really awesome point and a, a very revolutionary point it's it's not a small or subtle i mean it is small and subtle um but its effects can be enormous for sure but anyway the question was um what i'm curious is about how you're connecting the divine masculine with the divine feminine so how does um repairing your relationship with the triangle help you to have a better relationship with the spiral beautiful question thank you for asking because it's so connected right and this is this is something that doesn't get a lot of attention i think that the bulk of the focus right now especially when it comes to a lot of women who are doing this work and 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 participating in this kind of collective movement right now is there's not a lot of focus on repairing one's relationship with their inner sense of structure their inner triangle their inner masculine their inner kings it's all about the spiral and bringing more feminine more goddess more this which is is beautiful right it it's so fantastic to reclaim and remember that just gorgeous spiral component of us especially as women and women's bodies being so innately connected to the earth and to the cycles and the cosmos and being this conduit between earth and spirit and yet for most of us especially the more intuitive introverted sensitive women we don't necessarily need more spiral right? Like we have that on lock. We are so spirally. And that's part of what is, is, has filled us with so much shame. It's because we live in a culture and in a time, and I've talked about this so many times, there's tons of episodes and materials and classes and blog posts on all of this stuff, but this sense of feminine shame. So shame around anything that is cyclical and spirally and sensitive and intuitive and introverted and deep, dark, yen-like, mystical, and so it's not that we necessarily need more spiral. We need our spiral to feel safe so that our gifts can be fully embodied and actualized and offered. And we're not living under the weight of challenges and shame and other people and other people's shit <laughs> that we're just kind of holding. So I, you know, and I just real quick, I used to think that I needed more spiral. I wasn't feminine enough. I wasn't this enough. And the biggest most life-changing aha moment for me was like no I have plenty of spiral sometimes to my detriment what I need is a better relationship right relationship with my inner king my inner structure and so many of us shy away from structure because it it holds that that frequency of the wounded triangle that's really in the collective narrative it holds that frequency of punishment and power over. And so we kind of rebel against that. And yet our spiral essence doesn't feel safe. So then we're just kind of in purgatory. And that's when a lot of us succumb to to really unhealthy ways of being. To kind of numb. And it's like, well, nothing feels fucking safe and it all sucks. So to answer your question, even though I kind of already have in a spirally manner. Right. Because that's just my essence. Our queenly aspect that is the lunar, passive, spirally, transient parts of ourselves are always doing their thing. Always will be, always have been. That is that is existence itself. Existence itself is not linear or structured per se. So we hold a tremendous amount of shame and guilt and judgment around that fact, like I said. And we go to great lengths to resist it 
And rather than flowing with these inevitable spirally ways and primordial rhythms, our wounded sense of authority or our inner masculine has us mistrusting the spiral. We may believe on some level that we'll be punished, shamed, persecuted in some way for rejoining that dance, for remembering that dance. And then we judge the shit out of ourselves for even just having the desire to do so. So with a solid, healthy sense of containment, structure, and devoted discipline, we feel much safer to flow. So that that containment, that, that structure, that inner holding and discipline provides that sense of safety. It's our foundation, right? It's all things kind of like um, that energetic of the root chakra. And if we think about like the true essence of king, that is service. It is uh, sacrifice to something greater. It is really witnessing and and showing up in the ways that is of, of service and of love and devotion to something bigger. It's not punitive and judgy and all of the things that it's kind of morphed and distorted into. It's about holding space so that the most magical, highest evolution and highest good can then unfold and expand. And we have both of these within ourselves. We don't need to seek it outside. We don't need to have somebody come save us. It's all within ourselves. And so repairing that relationship, getting in touch with our inner king and our inner queen and these these different aspects and looking at what needs to change? Where do I not feel safe? And then where am I looking for that outside of myself? And so I really, I invite you to ask yourself the following questions. You know, I love to get you to dive deep. So maybe jot these down so you can spend some time with them later. How can you integrate your inner king and inner queen? What does that mean to you? How can they merge and make some awesome love? Who is your inner queen? Or, or I'm sorry. Okay, well, that's that's good as well. Who is your inner queen? That wanted to come out. That's not what I had written down. And we're going to flow with it. And more importantly than that, because I think most of us have a pretty good idea of that side of ourselves. Who is your inner king? And how does he feel about anything spirally transient and feminine? Do you have a little bit of like a stereotypical you know, 1950s kind of chauvinist critic living inside? I know I did. And he likes to pop up sometimes. Does your inner spiral feel safe? Does your inner triangle judge harshly? What do both sides need? And what do they need from each other? So get very clear on like, who who are these these characters? What do they need? What do they need from each other? And how can they come together? How can they merge? And this is that ultimate inner alchemy where two things, two seeming polarities are coming together to birth a third. So we're taking two things, they're coming together, they're making ecstatic love, and then they're making a baby through you. And that third energy gets to be birthed. And that third energy in this case is your most epic freaking life (laughs) that lives in a very integrated and wholesome way where you are seeking and finding from within, period. And to help with this process, you know, um, we've just launched the Apothecary. Inner Spark has its own Apothecary now, and I am offering my flower essence line that I created just for the sensitive, introverted, intuitive, magical being. And I really wanted to highlight Wild Potato and Wine Cup in particular, because they are really just profound to support this deep work. Wild Potato holds the codes of the original pure triangle, divine masculine energy. And Wine Cup is that of the queen codes. So working with these two and working with them together can really help you connect to these parts of yourself and to bring them online more fully and to work with them so that they're working through you. And those can be found. You can learn more about those at innerspark.life slash apothecary. And we will link that in the show notes. And I think that's all the time we have for today. Yeah. Um, I, I just had a, a realization 
um, as I was sitting here thinking about how you connect a healthy relationship with your inner masculine, with your inner triangle, with your, your structured side as a way of making your creative side, your spirally side, your feminine side feel more free to express itself and safer to express itself. And uh, I love looking for proof of the things that we're talking about from a total like skeptics point of view somebody who doesn't buy into anything holistic doesn't know anything about what we're talking about like what are things that they might have seen and known that would prove what you're talking about and for me uh like think back to the like late 90s early 2000s like when was uh metrosexual a thing to describe guys who were like quote unquote comfortable in their sexuality oh, like gosh yeah well, right yeah it's a silly thing and it's probably something we really haven't thought about in a long time but the point was and the message was that guys who were comfortable in their masculine were safe to express some more creative possibly feminine aspects of themselves so that idea that like oh that guy's a total jerk he has you know some kind of complex or something he doesn't have a healthy relationship with his masculine side um creates one kind of outcome and then oh this guy is really comfortable with himself and he's not afraid to express his spirally his creative his feminine side like that's something that as a culture we've already accepted that and we already know that and a lot of times you know if somebody is homophobic for example we wonder what kind of imbalance are they having within themselves like what are they repressing what are they so angry against what is it that isn't flowing and working for them uh, but people who are really comfortable have no problem expressing different sides of themselves and being around other people who also do that so what you're talking about is something that i think is has been seen and is known and has been known for a long time but we're just not acknowledging it and it, that goes back to what you were saying about the goddess it's like she's always been here and we're just not acknowledging it so the relationship between not only how do we relate to the divine feminine and how do we increase that awareness while well, we do it by allowing our being more comfortable with our triangular and structured parts of ourselves to allow ourselves to have that comfort in our spiral absolutely that was such a random <laughs> i know right weird way to connect the dots <laughs> really but... random connection and yet i i appreciate that because like you said a while back this is kind of subtle and small yet broad sweeping right broadly sweeping sure weeping broadly and yeah so that random connection is just one of the many ways that this shows up and I, I imagine that whoever is still listening all the way through thank you and you and I babe are gonna have more random little connections and insights after listening to this and after completing this so thank you so much and yeah I think we will close it there for today all right, listeners, if you've enjoyed today's episode, it would be much appreciated if you could review us and leave us a comment. Be sure to subscribe and share the love with a friend. There's also a listener survey you can take. The link is in the show notes. And come continue the conversation with me, please, especially on this topic. Tell me about your experiences with mending your spirituality and connecting with the goddess in my Facebook group, Activating the Sensitive Soul. The link is also on my website at innerspark.life slash resources. And have you checked out the latest and greatest resources and offerings I've created for you? From my virtual classes, the Thrive series, which feature new topics and practices each month to support the sensitive, intuitive, empath woman in rocking her life, to self-paced courses such as the Yoni Exploratory that features a variety of modalities ranging from shamanic journeying to expressive arts to reclaim and de-shame the power of your sacred Yoni. There's definitely something there for you, dear sister. Check out innerspark.life resources to learn more now. Catch us next time. So much love to you until then.